The Kelly Cup Final Series is set, with one team there for the first time and another looking to set a record. Teams which aren't playing are staying busy. Coaches, Hall of Famers, and affiliation news abound. Plus, a preview of the Kelly Cup Final so you'll know what to expect. All on this special expanded edition of ECHL Week. Welcome to another edition of ECHL Week. Coming to you this time from the SNHU Arena in Manchester, New Hampshire, home of the Manchester Monarchs. Time for a look at the conference final round of the Kelly Cup playoffs. And since we're in New England, let's start with the Eastern Conference Final between the Monarchs and the South Carolina Stingrays. Over the line, right side, moving in, Lynch. Lynch in front, shot, score! Zach Lynch, deep to the backhand, went to the forehand, and beat the goaltender, Parker Milner, to give the Monarchs the first goal of the game in this series for the sixth time. It's Monardo with it, back to Perrier. His shot, save, score in front by Flick. As Britton made the initial save off the shot of Perrier, and then Flick was there to pick up the spare change and bang it home to tie the game at one apiece. Leitner back out to the line to Lynch, who has the Monarchs goal. One-timer, Sosserman score! Sosserman with a laser, and the former Stingray puts the Monarchs on top. Two to one. Buck in the neutral zone taken by Flick for Chernichin. Chernichin's drive is blocked by Wisimirski. Another shot and a score by Monardo. And South Carolina has tied it at two with 5.29 to go in the second period. Epps pass to Zajac. Now to Archambault. His shot score in front on the backhand. And South Carolina takes the lead at three to two. South Carolina taking the lead for the first time tonight. Now it's Corey Ward dropping it off. Played ahead to Rome. Rome moving in. His drive score! Ashton Rome let it go from the hash marks of the right wing circle. Beating Milner. Now to Zajac. Zajac left circle. Back out it goes to Leach for a drive and a score. And South Carolina has regained the lead. As it appears that Archambault Redirected it by Sam Britton. The South Carolina Stingrays win the Eastern Conference Final four games to three, winning this game four to three. Now the season has come to an end for the Manchester Monarchs, who advanced through two rounds of the postseason, beating Adirondack and Brampton, but losing coming up just shy in this series with South Carolina. South Carolina wins the series four games to three. Yeah, it's definitely been a long season, but uh, the whole team's got one goal. We're trying to win a championship, and, you know, the amount of games it takes, it doesn't matter as long as at the end we win that championship. You see tonight when we play like that, we are a hard team to beat. And, um, that's what makes this team such, such a special group is when we can turn it on when our back's against the wall or um, when we play with energy and that passion, um, we're just a different hockey club. The Western Conference Championship, plus lots of league news when ECHL Week continues.
I'm Sean Zimmerman of the Colorado Eagles, and you're watching ECHL Week. The release of the 2017-18 regular season schedule for the ECHL highlights our look at news from around the league. The ECHL has announced its 30th regular season will begin on Friday, October 13th. It opens that night with eight games. Among the six teams opening their home schedules on Saturday, October 14th, are the ECHL's two newest teams. The Worcester Railers play their first ever game at DCU Center against Manchester, while the Jacksonville Icemen host Orlando at Veterans Memorial Arena. Some of the more interesting interconference matchups, Utah will visit both Manchester and Worcester. The Railers' travels will take them to both Colorado and Utah. Norfolk will play a pair of games against the Eagles, two in Idaho and another in Utah, plus Kansas City will head south to take on both Greenville and Atlanta. The conference and divisional alignment for the 2017-18 season will be announced following the annual Board of Governors meeting next month. Don't expect any major changes. The Tulsa Oilers have announced that head coach Jason Christie will not return for a third season with the team. Christie compiled a 64, 67, and 13 record in two seasons as Tulsa's bench boss. The team finished ninth in the Western Conference and one point shy of a playoff spot in 2015-16. The Oilers were 11th in the Western Conference this past season. During his tenure, Christie coached his 1,000th ECHL game and set the ECHL record for most career wins, 547. He's one shy of the mark for most career games coached in the league. NHL legend Wayne Gretzky will be part of the 2018 ECHL All-Star Classic in Indianapolis on January 15, 2018. The all-time leading scorer in NHL history will return to the city where he began his pro career, serving as the guest of honor for the ECHL's mid-season showcase. Gretzky will be part of a special pregame ceremony at Indiana Farmers Coliseum and will drop the puck to kick off the All-Star event. The Great One holds or shares a total of 61 NHL records, is a four-time Stanley Cup winner, and won nine Hart trophies as MVP during his 20-year NHL career. The Reading Royals have decided that Kirk McDonald has passed his audition and have named him the seventh coach in team history. He finished this season as the interim head coach. His three-year deal now also makes him head of hockey operations for the team. He joined the club as an assistant to then-coach Larry Corville in July of 2014. Reading has qualified for the Kelly Cup playoffs the last eight years. The only Eastern Conference team with a longer active streak is South Carolina. The Cincinnati Cyclones and NHL's Buffalo Sabres have announced a new affiliation agreement, said Sabres general manager Jason Bottero. The Cyclones have built a reputation for being a competitive ECHL club while helping players refine their games and progress to the next levels of professional hockey. The Rochester Americans will serve as Cincinnati's new AHL affiliate. Cincinnati recently ended a 10-year affiliation with the National Predators. The Sabres recently concluded a two-year relationship with the now-defunct Elmira Jackals. Just because we're in New Hampshire, it doesn't mean we've forgotten about the West. Let's look at the highlights of the Western Conference Final Series between Toledo and Colorado. Back the other way, dropped off Bergstock, will bring it in, now racing in, Spink loads, fire save made by Simpson, puck is loose, scored! Up high, Mardo, left point, cruises across, one time looking for it, register, loads, fires, SCORES! Forward. In comes Toledo, Birschbach with it, right wing side, centers it, shot, scores! Trying to move it on, take it away, brought back in, Hirschfeld with it, drops it over, cutting in, shot, scores! Into the corner, snagged by Zamica, upstairs, register, wide side, in front, SCORES! Deflected into the back of the net! To pick it up, move it ahead, register with it, down the right wing side, here comes McLeese, into the zone, winds, fires, SCORES! But intercepted. Stolen away. Here comes Nantel racing in. Nantel loads. Fires. Scores! It's it again. Sends it high. Mardo looking back door. Swings it across. Boykov. Drive. Save. Scores! Grab. Santa Mont. Red line. Loads. Tucks in. Fires. Scores! Here the Eagles are Western Conference champions in the ECHL.
Perhaps the key to the series win for the Eagles was Game 4. Holding a 2-1 series lead at the time, Colorado got this goal from Matt Garbowski about three minutes into the third overtime period to win 5-4, setting up the series clinching victory the following night. It was the longest game in the Kelly Cup playoffs this season. A Kelly Cup Finals preview, straight ahead on ECHL Week. So, Mr. Harris, we have your fingerprints on the safe, a photo of you opening the safe, a post using the hashtag, just robbed the safe. So, what are we supposed to think? Switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance. Excellent point. Case dismissed. Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer. I'm Joe Babbitt with the ECHL, and you're watching ECHL Week. Time for a Kelly Cup final preview. Let's take a look at the series between Colorado and South Carolina. These two teams have similar styles. They like the physical aspects of the game, so expect some trips to the penalty boxes. If that happens, the special teams will play very important roles. Alex Belzeal is leading the league in both goals and points, and significantly is also tops in power play goals with five. Where the Eagles break from the norm, their second and third leading scorers are both defensemen. Matt Register, a member of Kelly Cup winning Allen last season, and Jake Marteau are both in the top ten in the league this playoff year. The Stingrays are paced by Rob Flick, one of only three players with double-digit goals this postseason. Dominic Monardo and Kelly Zajac have also handled many of the scoring duties for South Carolina to this point in the playoffs. In goal, Parker Milner has played all but three minutes of the Rays' playoff games. He leads the league with three shutouts and is near the top in both goals against average and save percentage. The team is confident with him in the net. The Eagles have used both Lucas Hafner and Kent Simpson as their goalies in the playoffs, with Hafner getting most of the work. The numbers aren't as impressive for these two, except for the one that really counts, wins. Colorado is scoring at a rate of over three and a half goals per game. That can make up for a few defensive deficiencies along the way. Colorado had never won a playoff series until this season. South Carolina is trying to become the first team to win the Kelly Cup four times. Expect a very entertaining series. The men behind the microphones, voices of the ECHL. Today, Matt Melzak of the Toledo Walleye. What's your favorite ECHL city to visit? Fort Myers, uh, out of the teams that I have gotten a chance to go to, great building. Uh, fantastic area and we seem to go a lot in the January to March area and as a baseball fan I like to be down there when uh, you get spring training going. Tell us about your on-air partners. Yeah I've had some good ones uh, over the years as far as broadcast partners uh, right now getting a chance to work with Kyle Rogers who uh, going into this season was the all-time leader in games play goals assists, points for the Toledo Walleye. He's been uh, fantastic to work with. Also a former head coach of the Bowling Green Falcons. Also worked as an assistant with Boston College and a guy a long time ago played in a little spot called Peoria that was once in the ECHL uh, in Scott Pollock. Uh, fantastic to work with. Uh, his hockey knowledge as a coach uh, second to none. So been blessed in that regard to work with some great guys. Do you do any vocal exercises? I like to do, I have a, an old call that uh, from a mentor of mine, Mike Miller, when he was in the National Hockey League with the New Jersey Devils, that uh, one of the games that I heard him call with Wayne Gretzky out on the ice. So I do a, a thing out of one of his great calls where Gretzky had a breakaway and he scored, and I do that each and every game before we start. That wraps up another edition of ECHL Week from Manchester, New Hampshire. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check us out on all our social media channels. You can keep up to date on everything that's going on all over the ECHL. We'll see you in two weeks. See a lot of those guys too when we find out who wins the Kelly Cup in 2017.